In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is uh, with the new tools in Gaia 1.3 to create uh, some of the common terrains that you often find. Like one that we often see users requiring, especially for VFX, is um, a quick snowy mountain. And so I'm going to show you how easy it is to make a snowy mountain from one of the primitives, such as Ridge. So I just created a, a, a Ridge from the quick start. So you can just go new, blank, and in one of the blank options, you have Ridge, or just create a blank file and um, create a Ridge node. So the height of this looks fine. Um, I just think I would like to have more detail in the, the flat areas. So the one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a warp node uh, there, so that we have a bit of a curvature thing going on here. Uh, maybe you play with the seed a bit. There, I didn't want to lose this sharper area here. So there, this looks better. Um, this is a bit too um, straight. So anyways, this makes it better. Now to add more detail, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rocky node. And we're going to transpose all of the, the smaller detail like this onto this. So to do that, we'll just drag and touch the two outputs. And in the resulting combined node, we'll change the mode to embed. So this will then embed the flat detail from Rocky, uh, uh, literally just transposing it onto the ridge line. Uh, I'm seeing some of this is going below. So to fix that, what I'll, do, what I'll do is I'll go to the warp node and in the post-process stack below, I will add 5% clamping at the bottom just to raise this up. And there we go, the, the missing bits are gone. So, or rather the missing bits are back. Uh, anyways, now we have all sorts of little detail on that ridge line. Um, let's say now we'll add a fractal terraces node. And this is going to give us uh, some of these nicer terraces, uh, which are quite common in almost all mountains out there. Uh, I'm going to change the shape now a little bit, kind of define them a bit uh, differently. And I think I want a bit of unevenness, so we'll add some modulation. And so to do that, I will create a slope noise node, which looks like this and we'll feed that into the modulation port of the fractal terrace node which then in turn gives us this so that as you can see it's creating these awesome terraces here uh, you can try uh, mixing it up like i often like to go and use the min mode uh, so it lets you keep some of them but not all of them uh, adds a bit of variety although i really like what we had going on there so i'm not going to do it at this a uh, specific case, but you sh uh, you don't have this option whenever you want to try it. Um, you can also try max. Uh, it does the exact opposite, which in this case might not be too bad because that way we don't have terracing everywhere, just some of these places. But again, like I said, this basic look is pretty cool. So I'll just go back to that. Now, um, the next step would be to add a bit of erosion. Now, to uh, avoid reprocessing, we can do one of two things. One, we can create a node first, change the settings, then connect it. Um, or you could just connect it and then uh, use the tilde key or uh, you know, the one right, right, right next to the number one key. Uh, and that will suspend the engine. So now I can connect this and not have to worry about any reprocessing uh, when I change multiple settings. Because especially with erosion, it can sometimes take a bit of time to uh, you know, process and you don't want it reprocessing needlessly. So, okay, here are a couple of things that I'm gonna change before we allow this to process. First, we will change the selective processing to precipitation amount, which means we will limit, limit where the erosion actually happens. And then the next is instead of slope, we will switch this to, or rather instead of altitude, we will switch it to slope. And this will now go towards the, the steepest uh, areas, like the top 30%. What I wanna do for this specific case is I wanna reverse that. So uh, once, okay, this is done, um, I'm just gonna uh, 
we press the tilde key again that will resume our processing so you can see erosion is happening only in a few places so here's the before here's the after because this is such a light uh, portion that's being uh, or it, the process itself is lightweight because the portions that are undergoing erosion are so few we can then risk increasing the duration so I am going to right click which gives us these micro increments and I'm gonna double this up a couple of times so 16% and then hit apply changes you can see we get more of this so now we're getting all these cool erosive details uh, I think they're a bit too precise so I am going to change random sedimentation um, let's make it like about nearly a hundred percent so there we can see it's no longer that uh, a smooth flow we get a bit of rocky detail and the the effluvial lines being created are now a bit more random as well so that's great this gives us that slight erosion that brings in um, that that little bit of missing realism but we're not you know we don't have to go overboard and then do so much erosion that we actually lose these nice terraces now having said that let's risk doubling the erosion again so 32 percent and as you can see it's quite fast as even at 2k because it's only doing um, selective processing so there we go that actually looks quite good uh, now the only thing left is to give us some snow so I'm going to drag this out and create a snowfall node. And there we have our snow. But we want to make it more interesting. And so to do that, we want to expose the, the underlying terrain in some places while also creating nice snow drifts in others. So to do that, first thing I'm going to do is from the erosion node, I'm going to drag out and create a sunlight node. And what the sunlight node does is it creates a, a, a sunlight integral map, which is basically an accumulation of sunlight through a period. Uh, by default, it's just this thing, but you can give it the whole year. You can choose, uh, you know, the latitude, because of course sunlight hits the earth differently at different latitudes, and you can play with the north direction, which is just for creative control. So anyways, the defaults are fine because I'm not going for a specific location or time. I just want to have variety for my snow, and I'm going to feed that into the melt port of the snowfall node. So with that in place, uh, you'll see there are no changes, but that's also because my melt is at zero by default. Now, the melt is being modulated with the sunlight uh, or the sunlight integral map. And so I'm going to change it to something very high and you can see there we go. Wherever it's catching more sun, it gets uh, melted. Uh, this is obviously not exactly what I wanted. So I'm going to go and uh, maybe go half on the melt. That's better. And then at the same time, let's... Um, go for maximum settle and thaw so we have some movement in the snow so there it's coming down and when it does that it creates these beautiful uh, snow drifts and these lines and um uh some of these uh it's almost like a fluvial structure it's actually following some of the fluvial structure underneath because that's where the main channels are for the snow to uh, flow from um, next, I'll increase the intensity. Uh, let's go increase it by uh, 20, so 45. And that is giving us a really cool amount of snow. The settling helps create these snow drifts. Um, if you want to mess with this a bit more, what you can do is in the advanced uh, section, you can change uh the the slip off angle so this is the angle at which you know once enough snow has accumulated it'll start slipping off so if you reduce this you'll see more snow drifts down and the uh, sister parameter to that is the the uh, the adhered snow mass so how much is sticking uh, you can increase that and you can see more snow uh, remains up higher up so you can play with these two to get uh, a slightly different shape so there before we had something where the top became a bit emptier so now with this uh, we have a higher addition but a lower slip off angle so things are flowing down with the same time they stick a bit 
and that also in turn gives us these cool lines which are inherited from the underlying shape here so that's one of the reasons why i like having a lot of rocky detail even though the snow is going to just cover up everything and um when uh yeah you when you have all that cool detail the snow starts looking even better so like this um i could still reduce the melt a bit because we don't want these like these individual uh, bits of snow don't look that realistic so i'm going to reduce this there you go, that's starting to look cool. And let's see if we can quickly texture this. So um, I don't like texturing from the snow because that has the snow in the geometry. We don't want that. So I'll get a texture node out from the erosion, which was the last place before we added snow. And again, I always say this uh, whenever I'm talking about texturing is, uh, you know, mountains don't have too much color most of the time. They tend to be, uh, you know, not monochromatic really, but they still tend to have, uh, you know, very little range when it comes to different colors, especially when it's something so snowy because the bare rock um, retains only a few qualities. So anyways, I'm going to take our sat map, uh, texture map and then add a sat map to this. And so the sat map is going to use this as the texturing guide, the mask, and then add some color. Uh, we're not seeing the 3D stuff. So I'm going to go to erosion and press G to bin this in the un as the underlay. Go back. There we get to see this properly. That's cool. Not a realistic color, but still nice. Let's look for something like this. That's nice. That's not... Um, yeah, that's not too bad. Uh, I'll try this gray as well. Oh, that's that's nice. This one, 304 is also cool. So let me do this. I'll create another set map. And um, let's go find that one, which was let's see, way down here, this one. And let's see if we can mix the both of them. And uh, let's see if we can mix them uh using something like slope so i'm going to create a slope data map and we'll feed that into the combined mask use um 100 blending okay that doesn't look too realistic so we'll go back to the slope and we'll have this be more for the uh steeper parts of the slope and then we'll also have a high fall off so that we get a decent amount of blending space. So I'm going to, um, if you want this to be smoother, you reduce the range between min and max and then just keep increasing the fall off. So there's something like that. That's nice. That's better than what we got just by using either map by itself. So this, okay. This also, okay. Combine. It's awesome. So that's done. Now we just need to bring the snow back. And so to do that, I'll take the combine and touch it to the snow output of the snowfall node and go right click preset 100% max. And you can see this doesn't look right because I still have the erosion node as my underlay. I'll go uh, right click snowfall and pin that as the underlay. And now we have it. So if we were to uh, at any point, uh, you know, expose more rock, we could see more, but even as it is right now, uh, it's looking cool. And here you can see some of the exposed bits. Uh, let's go see if we can change the snow just a bit more. Uh, I'll reduce the duration. There we go. Get a bit more rock exposed down here. And so if you're setting up a scene like this, let me bring in our skybox. And I'm going to go to the atmosphere and increase the aerial perspective to give us a little bit of a feeling of depth. So there you go. This could uh, make for a really cool scene. 
So there you have it. You have your snowy terrain. And it doesn't really take that long. And as you can see, the node network is quite uh, concise and short. So anyways, um, enjoy your snowy terrains.